This use of play is brought to you by. This is how we roll. Oh, the offers are quite exciting, and the prices will leave you smiling. Everybody's got a chance to glow. Get two months of free movies and more when you sign up for Flow TV this Christmas. This is the Bobby This Today Evening Update for Friday, December 11th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Police are advising the public that there is no cause for concern over the circulation of several scams on social media. Police spokesman David Welch tells Bobby This Today that the Royal Bobby This Police Force is aware of information regarding to persons using scams as a means to enter homes in the country. But the acting assistant superintendent of police makes it clear that the force has not received any information to suggest that these camps have occurred or are occurring. However, ASP Welch is advising residents to be vigilant and ask for identification of anyone coming to their doors. He also assured that the force will inform the public of any crime trends that they are made aware of. The Doughty family in St. Philip was thrown into mourning today after their relative was gunned down in the U.S. 26-year-old Raj Paul Doughty was shot and killed following a dispute at a bar in Cincinnati, Ohio. Doughty, a former student of the Princess Margaret Secondary School, died on arrival at hospital from several gunshot wounds. His uncle, Artley Doughty Sr., tells Bobby this today, Raj's death comes as a total shock to the family. He remembered Raj as a quiet and fun-loving person with a passion for playing cricket and football, and he says he will be missed. Police investigations are currently underway in the U.S. No one has been arrested in connection with Raj's murder. The outcome of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines election will have no impact on the Barbados poll in 2018. But political scientist Peter Wickham says the Vincentian poll clearly shows that leadership is a key factor for voters. And it's an issue, he says, political parties in Bridgetown should pay serious attention to. The, the thing about Barbados is the election is so far away. The election in Barbados is not until 2018, and we still have a considerable amount of ground that needs to be covered. Um, what I would say is that if you look at the significance of leadership, uh, it, it, it says to me that leadership has a huge part to play in terms of, uh, of a, a second term, third term, or fourth term, and also the popularity of leaders in terms of whether or not people will or won't vote for them. Um, I'm inclined to think that it was leadership that saved uh, Dr. Gonzalez from political obliteration. It's that he was so much more popular than, his, um, than the, the other uh, candidate, Mr. Arne Eustace. In the case of Barbados, um, one would argue that leadership was also what seemed to have saved uh, Prime Minister Fernando Stewart and the extent to which people may have been hesitant about re-electing or NASA under circumstances that presented themselves in the last election in 2013. So um, I guess the lesson for Barbados is really the role of leadership and popular leadership and the extent to which that can be uh, an asset or a liability uh, depending on how one looks at it. Wickham is also of the view that a winner for the ruling Unity Labour Party has put an end to the political changes taking place in the region in recent times. This was perceived to be a change year. You know, we just had an election in Antigua and Barbuda where there was a change of government. I think it's in Nevis, there was a change of government. Trinidad and Tobago, there was a change of government. And on a fourth term, the environment of change has essentially been stopped by Dr. Gonzalez, who has been able to retain office, albeit by a relatively slim majority, but nonetheless, he, he continues to be there. Uh, and I think it says that we need to approach each election in the Caribbean on the basis of its own merits. Um, St. Lucia is coming up next. And, of course, the question is whether or not Dr. Assey will be able to retain. Uh, he had two terms unbroken, uh, broken, and then now he will be seeking uh, his second, second term. And it will be interesting to see whether he comes out um, on top in this, this occasion. Uh, and I don't know, I would like to say that there are no, to me, there are no direct comparisons that you can make between the two circumstances, other than the fact that both countries are facing uh, severe economic challenges. The National Council of the Barbados Labour Party is confident that it will win the court case brought against it by former member Dr. Maria Egard. The council, led by political leader Mia Motley, met with party, the party's legal counsel, Leslie Haynes QC and Roger Ford QC, at headquarters last night. Barbados today was reliably informed that both attorneys felt that the case, which challenges the expulsion of the Christchurch West MP, had no merit and believes that the chances of success in court was great. 
In sports now, Barbados Pride will 272 for six in the first innings at the close of play in their fifth round WICB Professional Cricket League Regional Round for the encounter. They are playing against the Leeward Islands Volcanoes at Kensington Oval today. After losing the toss and being sent into bat, the home side was led to the total by Royston Chase, who finished on beaten on 95, while Jonathan Carter made 54 and Captain Kevin Stout added 41. Past bowler Gavin Tung has so far bagged four wickets. There's regional and international news after this short break. It was days before Christmas, I had so much to do. Shopping, more shopping, and I was feeling blue. There's a mother, a father, a wifey, and friend. Lots of things to buy, but there was no money to spend. Ah, I found the answer. The BT Shopping Spree. 15,000 in goodies, free, free, free. It's easy to enter, nothing hard to do. Follow my instructions and a winner can be you. Visit facebook.com backslash Barbados today. Do it quickly and fill out your form to enter this spree. Look, I'm shopping at the cost you like mega store. Come down, fill your trolleys with goodies and more. And like me, you two can say, ho, ho, ho. We pick up with news from our regional neighbors, no negative fallout just yet. But the president of Invest TT says the decision by the central bank to reveal which companies use large amounts of foreign exchange could possibly discourage potential investors from setting up shop in the country. Speaking on TV6's Morning Edition, Raquel Moses warned that the statement could undermine investor confidence. It isn't the most helpful thing to be to be quite open it's not the most helpful thing because you have to investors need to be confident in the confidentiality in the state of the environment in um you know us in being entrusted with their information this week the bankers association issued a statement condemning governor Jawala Rambaran's public revelation which named companies such as price mart courts Massey Distribution and Nestle has some of the top users of foreign exchange. Governor Rambaran has defended the move, citing public concern over the challenges in accessing U.S. dollars. That report from Fane Richards of TV6 News. And finally, Taliban militants attacked a foreign guest house in Kabul's embassy district, killing one person and causing several casualties. The Taliban say the fighters detonated a car bomb in the Shepherd area and we're currently inside a building there. More in this report from the BBC. At least two Spanish diplomats managed to flee from uh, a compound of at least three homes uh, that has been attacked. Uh, one of them was uh, banging his head, uh, uh, showing his grief uh, against an armored vehicle, crying. Uh, Afghan special forces, Western special forces were there. And as we speak, uh, Afghan police sources are telling me that the attackers have burned several armored Humvees, uh, 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 apologies, armored vehicles that belong to the Spanish embassy. They've been putting fuel on them, uh, and Afghan special forces are there. They have taken positions uh, on the roofs. Uh, snipers are there, and these are uh, some of the best special forces fighting. Uh, these sort of attacks, complex attacks, but even they are saying this is a very, very tough situation. It's a, uh, a residential area. And that's our evening update, but there is more on our website at www.barbidestoday.tv. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, and like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals or Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also, tune in to Channel 101 on Flow TV or Mix 96.9 FM 
for more news and sports. I'm Fronyala Wedderburn. Do have an enjoyable weekend.